Let us pray, please. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you and praising you for your presence that we felt this morning. Thank you, Father, for filling this place with your spirit. Use us now, Father, in the next few minutes to open your word. Bring forth the living word, giving you the honor and the glory for everything that's accomplished. And we pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Mark chapter 5, a familiar story we're going to use this morning. <clears throat> People often ask, and I have been teaching on this for the last, I don't know, couple of months actually, and uh, this question has been asked several times during the teaching, and, and uh, I can't seem to get away from it. And this is what I was led to bring this morning when Brother Greg asked me to uh, teach this morning. So, and the question is, can a Christian be possessed by a demonic spirit? And I wanted to bring that this morning, and I want to talk to that uh, a little bit this morning. And the, to answer that question, you have to know the meaning of the word possessed <clears throat> or possession. If the word possession means to own, the answer is no. A Christian cannot be owned by a demonic spirit. <clears throat> if a person is truly born again, that person is owned, it, he belongs to God. And Satan cannot own that person or take possession of that person. <clears throat> but if you're talking about control which possession can also mean, then the answer is yes. Satan can, if given an opening, <clears throat> can come into a person's life and he can control that person, whether he's born again or not. And that's what I want to talk to this morning is that possibility and I want us to examine ourselves this morning as we look at this because I think all Christians struggle with this from time to time. <clears throat> and we need to be aware and we need to know how to deal with it. So we're going to look at this story. And always Jesus is the example, so we're going to look at a, an example of Jesus dealing with a demonic. In Mark chapter 5, verse 1. <clears throat> And they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Now, Jesus and his disciples have come across the Sea of Galilee where he had just rebuked a storm, if you remember that story. <clears throat> now they're on the eastern border of the Roman Empire, in an area known as Gadara or Gadarene. And it's largely under the Greek influence. <clears throat> and you need to be aware of this because of some of the things that are about to happen in this story. And then in verse 2, Mark chapter 5, verse 2, And when he, he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. This unclean spirit is a demonic spirit. And I want you to pick up on the word also here that immediately when he came out of the ship, he was addressed by this man with the unclean spirit or the demonic spirit. <clears throat> That's important, and we'll cover that a little later on as we go into this. Look at verse 3 now in our scripture here. We're going to read 3, 4, and 5 together. Who had his dwelling among the, among the tombs? This man lived in the cemetery. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones." Now, here's a man, we could say, we could classify this man as a wild man. <clears throat> You'll also learn later on in the scripture that he was wearing no clothes. 
He had been chained. He had been put in all sorts of bonds. Nothing could hold him. He could break anything. And then he was hurting himself. So he, he was cutting himself with stones. He was bruising himself. He, he, anything he did, it harmed himself. The demonic spirit that had control of this man was in full control of this man's life. Look at verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now I want you to understand something here. As much control as the demonic spirit had on this man, he couldn't stop him from coming to Jesus. Now I want you to understand this morning that Regardless of what Satan, the lies that Satan brings in the lives of people, he can't keep you from Jesus Christ. He can't bar you or bind you or, or anything else away from the truth of Jesus Christ. This man who was not in his right mind, this man who was totally under the control of Satan, when he saw Jesus, he ran to him. And I want you to get that this morning as we go into this because this is important. Especially for the born-again believer. The born-again believer who is in Christ who may have opened the door for a demonic spirit to come into their flesh or their soul. <clears throat> and, and there's thousands of them. Many different things that can come into the life of a born-again believer. Simply by opening a door. But never be deceived by Satan to think that you can't run to Jesus. He's there with open arms in every situation and in every circumstances. Just know that in no way Satan has enough power to keep you from coming to Jesus in any circumstance. Look at verse 7. And the man cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Even though it was the man's voice, it was not the man speaking, it was the demonic spirit speaking immediately recognizing Jesus, immediately becoming subservient to Jesus because Jesus has authority over it. Always understand that. Jesus has authority over any demonic activity that's going on. So our position in Christ gives us a position to be in authority over any demonic spirit. Just mark that and keep it. Look at Verse 8 and 9 together. <clears throat> For he had said to him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for there are many. Now, Jesus had already spoken to the demonic before the man, before the spirit was even speaking to him. Jesus spoke to him. As soon as he started coming towards him, Jesus was speaking to it. I want you to understand this morning that this is an example of how we deal with this. For some reason today, we don't teach too much and we don't preach too much in our churches about the demonic. But Christendom is full of demonic spirits <clears throat> that are trying their best to get in to God's people any way they can. And we need to be aware and we need to know how to deal with this. Because too much of it has been allowed to go on. And look at what it says. Look at what he says in, in, in verse 8 and 9. He says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Jesus is already talking, not to the man, but to the spirit. To the demonic. He's already addressed it. He's already telling it. And he's already found out what its name is. If we don't know what the name of the problem is, we can't address it. If we don't know how to address it and how to call it, we're not going to know how to get rid of it. 
So we need to come to ourselves and we need to find out what is the problem. What is that thing that I keep repenting of over and over and over and over and over again? And for 20 years I've repented of it and it's still there. What is that thing that keeps bothering me? I know I'm saved. I know I'm born again. I know that I am in Christ. But there's that one thing that keeps coming back, keeps coming back, keeps coming back. Put a name on it. Put a name on it. And then in verse 9 it says, And you ask him, What is thy name? It's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus said, What's your name? Not the man, the demonic spirit. And it's interesting the name that he gets back. He says legion because there are many. Well, a legion was over 6,000 men in the Roman army made up a legion. So what we're looking at here are thousands of demons that have taken up residence in this man. Listen, if we try to deal with demonic and we don't know, or we won't admit a problem. I think the biggest problem I know in my life that I've seen, and the biggest problem I've seen in the lives of fellow Christians, not admitting that I have a problem. Not admitting that there's this one area in my life that I can't make go away. Once I put a name on it, now I can deal with it. Once I put a name on it, I can address it in Jesus' name, and it has to go. It has to leave. Look at verse 10. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Understand that the, the demonic spirit has to have a place. A demonic spirit is a disembodied spirit that's looking for a place to be. And it will take up residence anywhere a door is opened for it. Don't open a door. We talk about it a lot here. We have gates the eye gate, the ear gate, all of these gates, don't open the gate for the demonic. Don't open the gate in a movie. Don't open the gate in the music. Don't open the gates in what we're looking at on the Internet. Don't open the gate for the demonic, because if you do, they will come right in. And too many of us today open too many gates. We open too many doors. We allow the demonic to come in. I know this sounds like everybody looks like I'm getting on to you, but I, this is good news, y'all. This is not bad news. The good news is you don't have to deal with it. You are born again. You are the, a son of God. You are seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. You don't have to deal with Satan. He's already been dealt with. So everything he's trying to do to you and to me, he's trying to put us back into bondage, and that bondage has been broken. The only way he can put us back into bondage is if we allow him to. Don't allow him. Don't let him in. You have the, the power of the most high God at your disposal. Because he loves you. He has called you son. And he has put it there so that you don't have to deal with this. Jesus has authority over any and all demonic. And they know it. If we are truly, truly born again, then we too have the same authority. In Jesus Christ's name. Look at verse 11. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. 
And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Doesn't matter, man or animal. The demonic has got to have a place to be. And they didn't want to leave the country. Understand the Greek influence of the country they were in. There was plenty of places for the demonic to be. In verse 13, with Jesus gave them leave. In other words, Jesus gave them permission. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. And there were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. Jesus gave them permission to leave and to go into the swine. And the severity of the demonic basically made the swine go crazy, and they ran into the sea, and they basically killed themselves. Look at verse 14. <clears throat> and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. In verse 15, and they came to Jesus and to, to see that him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Can you imagine? They knew this man. They, they knew the crazy man that lived in the cemetery that would, didn't wear any clothes, <clears throat> that had been chained, had broke chains, had, he's just crazy. Don't go out there. This man's crazy. Now all of a sudden he's sitting there, he's got clothes on, he's talking to Jesus just like everybody else. He's, he's perfect. In his mind, spiritually connected with Jesus, sitting there talking, but they were afraid. Nothing to be afraid of. Let me tell you, our, our society today has built this demonic stuff up. We s turn the TV on, go to the movies, <clears throat> whatever you want to do, you see all of this demonic junk. And they're building this stuff up to, as a fear thing, as, as something to be afraid of something to uh, uh, steal your peace, don't let it, because it has nothing to do with you. If you have some demonic something working in your life, get rid of it. Turn it out. You have the power to do it. Get rid of it. Get away. Get that thing that's been on you for all these years. Get it away from you. Turn it out. Give it to Jesus and let him deal with it. He knows what to do with it. He just did it here. Leave. You've got to go. And you can run to Jesus with anything. It doesn't matter what it is. And when it's gone, it's gone. And don't let it back in because you've got Jesus Christ. You are in Christ. You have something to fill your life with. You have something to fill yourself spiritually with and not allow it to come back in. Look at verse 17. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. You know, you would think they would have invited Jesus to come teach everybody about how to get rid of these demonic spirits, but they said, no, we want you to leave. We're afraid of you. We don't understand what you're doing. We don't understand. We don't want it. We want you to leave because you're causing confusion. Look, you killed all these guys' pigs. The world won't understand. But don't worry about the what the world understands and what the world doesn't understand. The world will never understand Jesus Christ. Only the born-again believer will understand Jesus Christ. Only the born-again believer will understand demonic influence in their life and the fact that Jesus Christ is the only way you're going to get it out of your life. <clears throat> Don't live a life of a born-again believer who is in bondage to a, to a demonic spirit 
that you don't have to deal with. And that goes for your family and your friends. I see too many people dealing with it all the time. And I'm telling you, Satan will take every opportunity to slide one in on you. Don't receive it. Don't allow it. If your children are watching a movie and, you, and the spirit tells you, that's bad. Cut it off. I don't care if the rest of the world is enjoying it. Cut it off. Don't open the door and allow that spirit to come in. Because it will. A lot of people... A lot of people want to deny the demonic existence, if you will. So I, I took the time to do a little study in, in the New Testament only. Sixty-one times in the New Testament, Jesus dealt with demonic spirits. Sixty-one times it's recorded that Jesus dealt with demonic spirits in the New Testament. If it's not important... Why is it recorded so many times? And why is it one of the top things that Jesus dealt with? Because it was one of the top things that were plaguing those believers who were following Jesus. Those people who were coming to him for help, most of them were coming filled with demonic spirits. So don't take it as a fairy tale, as a joke, as something we've seen on TV as a is a ha-ha and all this kind of stuff. It's very serious. Don't allow our society today to lull us into just accepting and receiving all this demonic stuff that we don't have to deal with, we don't have to have in our lives, and we don't want it in our lives. We want to be able to serve God, and we want to be able to serve God without bonds of any kind. Look at verse 16. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. I, I just wrote down a few verses here where demons are uh, acknowledged as far as uh, the work of Jesus. Matthew eight sixteen says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his words and healed all that were sick. It's interesting when you start looking at the healing that Jesus did. Most of the time he cast out demonic spirits before he healed. Think about it. Most sicknesses, most illnesses are demonically brought, if you will, into the human body. Look at Mark three fourteen and 15. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that they might spend, uh, them forth, send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. It's always together, to heal sicknesses and cast out devils. To heal sicknesses and cast out devils. The demonic. Matthew 9, 32 and 33. As they went out, behold, he brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. C.S. Lewis, most of you know who C.S. Lewis was. He, he made a statement once. He said, There are skeptics and there are the superstitious when it comes to demonic. The skeptics say there's no such thing as a demon. The superstitious say, where are they? I want to find them. I want to see them. I want to, I want to, I want to know all that there is to know about the demonic. But really, we should be in the middle. The born-again Christian should be somewhere between a skeptic and superstitious. We should be aware. 
we should know. And we should know how to combat the demonic. We shouldn't be looking for it, but we should be well aware of the existence of it. But when it shows up, we need to know how to deal with it. And it will show up because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that's under the control of Satan. And all of his demonic activity is under his control. So don't think you're going to tiptoe through this world and not trip over his demonic influences because it's there. Everywhere you go, it's there. It's in school, it's in workplace, it's in church, it's in everywhere you go. It's always there. Remember, you can't cast out the flesh. What do I mean? <clears throat> the flesh is, the, is our part. We are three parts. We're spirit, soul, and flesh. Our flesh is the part that's always wanting something, needing something, got to have something. I'm cold, I'm hot, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm this, I'm that. Our soul is a part of us that's trying to please the flesh most of the time. So we're trying to change our soul over to our spirit. If we're born again, our spirit is the spirit of God. If our flesh is over here trying to do all this stuff, that's the place the demonic wants to attack all the time. That's the place the demonic wants to come in because the flesh is what opens the door. The flesh says, I want to see that. All of my friends are watching that movie. Why can't I go watch it? That's the flesh. So we open the doors with the flesh and our soul is trying to please the flesh because we haven't changed our soul over to the spirit yet. We're working on that. That's a, that's a lifelong process, by the way, trying to get that soul over to the spirit because your spirit is perfect. Your spirit is saved. It belongs to God. No, nothing's going to ever touch it. But your flesh and your soul are different things. So when we start talking about demonic things here, we're talking about flesh and soul issues, primarily flesh issues. Anything that attacks you through the flesh, be careful. Be very careful. Because there's the door that Satan will come in and bring the demonic in. And don't get upset because I tell you that you can be in bondage and be born again. You should be happy because there's a way out of the bondage. Jesus Christ is your way out of the bondage of any kind of demonic activity in your life. This is a happy message. This is hope. This is, this is your way of saying, I want to be complete. I want to be full. I want to be in Jesus Christ, and I don't want any of this other junk hanging off of me. I think one of the saddest things I ever was involved in <clears throat> I wasn't going to tell you this, but I'll tell you anyway. Had a friend, pastor, addicted to pornography. 20 years addicted to pornography. Married, three kids. Would come and I think I was the only person he would talk to about it and cry and beg me to help him get over it. I knew he was a pastor. I knew he was born again. I knew he was a pastor. I knew God called him. But what do you say to somebody like that? How do you deal with it? How would you deal with it in your own life? You run to Jesus. I can't get this out of my life. 
you're going to have to take it out. Rip it out if you have to. But the main thing is identify it as a problem. Once it's identified as a problem, now it can be addressed. But until it's identified as a problem, Jesus can't do anything. He's not going to rush in and force it out of you until you surrender it. And that could be anything. That's just one. And he finally got rid of it, by the way. Don't let Satan put you in bondage. And it could be anything. It could be a major thing. It could be little minor things. But understand, anything that puts you in bondage is like sin. There's no big or small sin. There's no large or small bondage. Bondage is bondage. Satan has got his grip on you. Don't let him have it. It's too easy to surrender to God. Too easy to get rid of it through Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, he says, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. And then in Matthew 9, 32 and 33, it says, And they went out, and behold, they, were, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake in the multitudes marvel, saying it was never... Those, these scriptures, what I'm trying to get you to understand is Jesus dealt with this constantly. This is not just something that happens every once in a while. So just understand. So can a Christian be demon-possessed? No. Can a Christian be under the control and bondage of the demonic spirit? Yes. So we have to examine ourselves. We have to know, is there an area in my life that I have not surrendered? You know, there's, there's, there's a saying. I think we get too accustomed to sayings that I want Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life. And I, and I don't know that a lot of Christians fully understand lordship. To say that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life means that I have surrendered everything over to Jesus Christ. The problem is most of us have some of those things back here that we're not too sure that we want to surrender. It's those things that Satan uses to hold us in bondage. And it's those things that those demonic things are active in our lives in. And we know they're there and we're afraid to deal with them. Because I may not be that good in business anymore if I, if I have to surrender that. Even though I know it's bad, I may not be that good at this or I might not be able to do this or I might not be able to do that but the Bible says he will supply all your needs you don't need part of your needs supplied by Satan part of your needs supplied by God you've got to surrender all I have to surrender all if I want Jesus Christ Lord in my life I've got to surrender I've got to name him I've got to put a name to it. I've got to put a name to that that's holding me in bondage. I've got to turn it loose, and I've got to let Jesus throw that out of my life, get rid of it, and not let it come back. Again, this is not... I hope nobody feels depressed hearing this because it's not the point. The point here is be happy. Because if you have felt bondage in your life and you can't figure out, I know I'm born again, I know I'm saved, I know all of this stuff, but there's just something that's not right. Well, praise God, you know what's wrong now. Surrender that 
and let Jesus have it. He's already taken care of it. Get it out of your life. And now you can claim Jesus Christ as Lord because you've turned everything over to him. Please don't let Satan have any part of your life anymore. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to come face to face with yourself and sit down and just, I tell people all the time, the best way to do it is, is make a list. Sit down and, and write a list. Because it's not just going to be one thing. It's going to, you're going to think of one thing, then you're going to say, oh, yeah, there's that too. And, and there's that. And, and there's that one too. And you're going to find out there's more than one. And anybody who says, well, I don't have any in my life, that's one. That's called pride, arrogance. Don't let Satan have anything. Because the only way he can do it is to lie, cheat, and steal. He can only deceive. He can only sneak in, but only when you open the door. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 17. I think this kind of sums this up pretty good. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto, the, unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. And behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all parts of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What's he saying? What's he saying? He had sent these 70 people out. He had sent them out to minister to people. And you see what they were doing. They, they come back and they're just excited beside themselves. And they said, even the demons had to go when we spoke. And then Jesus says, you know, I saw Satan fall from heaven. He ain't nothing. I saw him fall. So don't get excited about that. He's nothing. Get excited about your name is written in the book, in, book of life. That's what you get excited about. Because your name is written in the book of life, you can call the the, the demonic, demonic and throw them out and they have to leave because I saw him fall from heaven. So if you want to know how you can do this, it's because Jesus saw him fall from heaven. And Jesus has given you everything. When he died on the cross, when he hung there, you were on his mind. And everything that you've ever experienced bad in life, he experienced on the cross. And everything good in life, he secured for you. And he placed you in Christ, the place for you to stay from now on, for eternity. <clears throat> Satan can't touch you, so don't let him mess with you. And that's all he can do distract you, put you in bondage, take your time, take your efforts, take your resources that God has given you. Don't allow it. Now, again, look at this as a very positive message. There's no reason for any Christian to ever suffer from bondage knowing the truth that will set you free. And the truth is Jesus Christ. If there's bondage in your life, call it. Name it. Get rid of it. 
And when he comes back knocking again, turn him away. Don't let him in. Renew your mind. Renew that soul over to the spirit. That's what we're supposed to do. Can we all stand? We, uh, we always want to close our services with an opportunity for anyone who's not born again to come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, Joyce is going to come and play, and I want you to really think about it. And this is also an opportunity to renew yourself. You know, from time to time, you just have to get real with yourself. You have to just sit down and say, where am I? Where am I at in my walk with God? Where am I at in my service to God? Where am I at? What, what am I doing? Sometimes we get lost in the world. Sometimes we get lost in all different things. It, it hurts us. So now's the time to deal with that if you need to. But if you're here and you're lost and, and you know the Holy Spirit has touched you this morning and you know that you need, you need Jesus Christ, we always want to give an opportunity for you to come forward and Make that statement, make that profession of faith that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we'll rejoice with you this morning uh, because nothing can ever happen in a person's life greater than that, that they receive Jesus Christ. thank y'all for being here this morning. Continue to lift Brother Greg up. Uh, didn't mention it earlier, but we will be having Bible study at 5 o'clock this afternoon in the fellowship hall. Anybody who would like to come to that is fully welcome to come. I'll be teaching. Um, and we usually run about an hour, hour and a half there on that. So everybody's welcome to, to come and be a part of that. Uh, it's, uh, it's a time when you can ask questions. Uh, a lot of times we just open questions and wind up discussing questions and never really get too far in the, in the prepared Bible study. But everybody's welcome uh, to come to that. Uh, and um, if no one has anything they'd like to say, uh, we'll dismiss. And thank you all and everybody have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, let us, uh, uh, I'm going to ask um, Brother Perry if he'll close us in prayer. Please.